Bumble finally admits that it was wrong. It is now allowing men to send the first message. It made the change after it got tons of complaints, and these complaints weren't coming from the men. They were coming from women who said that the burden of sending the first message was too much. Who could have seen this coming? Who could have seen this coming? <laughs> Look, guys, I've been hating on Bumble for a while. I'm not a big fan of the app. Tons of my clients use it, and it's not super successful for them. It is successful for some, who, and I'll get into who it's successful for in a little bit. But look, Bumble's got a lot of problems, okay? And from the get-go, I was never a fan of this format that was forcing women to make the first move. In my experience, most women prefer the guy to make the first move. I'm not saying for all of them, but they prefer it. And you see this from what they're saying. They're saying that, like, you know, spending time crafting a personalized, thoughtful opening line and getting no response is debilitating. <laughs> Sorry, I just have to take that seriously. Welcome to the world of a guy, okay? This is what men deal with on a daily basis. But look, I'm not hating on this. You know, I think that that's a totally valid concern because women like it when men approach them. You know, that, that's part of the dating process. And look, this is coming from a guy whose sister is about to marry a guy who she made the first move on. But I know that she is in the minority of cases. For the majority of women out there, even if they like a guy, a lot of times they won't even walk up and approach them or start a conversation. They wait for the guy to do it. So this goes against exactly what Bumble was founded on because it was founded for women. It was founded on the principle that Dating apps were already so male-centric, they were giving men too much of an advantage, and she was in Tinder, and she decided, she got mad, she, she decided she was gonna come and start her own application. The internet was quite literally engineered with men in mind. I'm not bashing them, I'm just saying what it is. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of men that were solving problems that they experienced. Right. And so when I found myself at the front line of that, I was seeing the intersection of broken love women being forgotten in love with the explosion of toxicity and harassment. And dude, she got so much praise from everybody. Like she was going around touring, like getting interviewed by all these people. And uh, they were all super enthusiastic. And I'm thinking like, what planet does she live on? Does she live with hu other humans? Does she know that most men get zero matches? Does she know that most women can choose who they get to go out with on these apps? Do they really need more of an advantage? Look. There is one kind of guy who Bumble works for, and it's really good looking guys that already get a lot of matches, because then they get more matches on Bumble, because Bumble really promotes the highest ranking profile. So anyway, these higher ranking profiles get seen by a bunch of people, they get swiped on and matched, and they have this whole laundry list of women that they can contact and message back. They don't message back most of them, so all those women get disappointed. And the women who they do go out with, they see no reason to settle down with them, so those women get disappointed too. You know, if you go to Bumble's website, they say that 98% of people on the app are looking for a relationship. Dude, Bumble is the last application that I would recommend that you go on to get a relationship. You know, if you're looking for a relationship, maybe Hinge would probably be a better one. And so look, dude, Bumble has not succeeded at any of the places that it's, it's not even succeeded with women too. It started out as a feminist dating app and ironically, three times as many men use Bumble as women do. So clearly this app designed for women is not working well for women, okay? And I don't think it's working well for anybody really because both the men also get disappointed because most men don't fall into that category of guys who get all the matches. So both sides are disappointed. So what ends up happening is they get uh, dating app burnout. You see dating app burnout happen, not just in Bumble, although I think it probably happens worse there than in other places where you know women and men just get burnt out of using the app. I think women tend to get more burnt out because they're not attracted to a lot of the guys who they match with and talk with. And the guys who they are, they end up not being able to go out with. And then men just don't get matches and they don't match with women who they're actually attracted to. They start a conversation and it just fizzles out into nothing. People don't see that much of a reason to meet up, okay? And so as a result, people are getting burnt out from them and all of the app companies are losing money. Bumble has has been hit really, really hard, but they've probably been hit the worst. They lost $2 million last year. The CEO had to step down. She was the one who founded the company. She's had to step down. And on top of that, it's, its valuation is less than 90% of what it opened at. That means she started out as a billionaire, more than a billionaire, and now she's just lost more than 90% of her stake in the company. It's not doing very well, needless to say, but there is hope for you guys. And the hope is this. Number one, I would probably, if you're gonna use an app, I would probably use Hinge. Number two, 
I would get off the apps altogether. Don't completely get off them. Make them as a backup option where occasionally if you get someone who's talking to you, you can go out with them. But if you're literally making them the only option that you have, that's just a losing mentality. Like you're not setting yourself up for success. You need to be meeting people in real life. And that's the best way. Like women, when they're just looking at your photo, they only get to see what you look like on a, on a picture. But the way you talk, the way you act, like all of those things get taken into account. The way you approach them, that's a huge part of why women like a guy. And they're missing all of that. That's why women aren't attracted to 90% of the people who they see on the application is because they're missing all of those elements. When you meet in real life, it solves that problem. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Lloyd, I would love to approach and meet more women in real life. I just don't know where these women are. Where do I go to approach and meet them? I have a full list in my free school group. So if you go to my school group, there's a section there that talks about all the places to meet women. And the best ones, I've actually outlined what you do at these areas. I've tried all of them. I recommend them to all my clients. All my clients have met, dated, slept with, gotten girlfriends from the places that I'm mentioning on this list. Okay, so I would check that out. Now, if you want more personal help from me, you can go to getcoachedbyloyd.com, fill out the form. We'll talk to me or a member of my team, and we'll see if you're a good fit for us to work together. Okay, cool. So those are the solutions, you guys. You know, this should come as no surprise to anyone who's been paying attention to the apps these days, especially not, you know, didn't come as a surprise to me. But if you're here and you're watching this video and you're thinking all these negative thoughts about the opposite sex, both men and women, you know, if you're on other side, this game that dating has become where we just sit at home and scroll trying to find somebody and hoping that we match is not what we are adapted for. And what we are adapted for is dealing with people in real life. Yes, it can be awkward and very scary at first. New people are scary, but I invite you to really make an effort to do this because that in and of itself will be the best way for you to meet people. And honestly, it's the best way to live your life. You know, life's not worth living unless you're spending time with people in person. So I invite you to do that. Thank you so much for watching and good luck out there.